Hey everyone and welcome to a video and a project that I've wanted to get going for about three years. It's ultimately something called a render pump or a render sprayer. So it's a pump that moves render or plaster from one spot and gets it onto your wall. There's a few ways that you can do that. Uh, and a few different approaches. And this one that I'm going to build is going to be a very specific type. Now, why do I want one? I, the natural building company that I run, Curvitecture, we specialize in a product, um, in a technology called Super Adobe or Earth Bag Building. And uh, this uses... Um, soil or earth inside long bags that you lay and compact and then once you've finished your wall which takes quite a while you then have to render it which takes really quite a while as well it needs normally at least three coats of render um, and sometimes four in some areas and when you're doing this all by hand this is a really labor intensive part of the build and really increases the time that it takes to build and um, the energy and the labor, which ultimately, if um, you're hopefully paying people, that equals money. So time is money. So I've really wanted to minimize that uh, long period that it takes to render an entire building. So I've been really interested in render pumps. Um, and probably about four years ago, we were standing around a fire and chatting with a friend. And uh, he mentioned the concept of peristaltic pumps. And I'd never heard of that before. Um, I didn't know how it worked. I had a pretty vague understanding of what a pump was, um, but there's actually quite a few divisions and quite a few different types of pumps. And uh, today we'll be looking at three different systems of how, um, if you're wanting to build a render pump, uh, there's about around three out there um, there are more, but there's three that I'll focus on today that run on specifically a different system than water pumps or um, some type of um, some some conventional piston pumps. So the three different types that I'm going to be looking at primarily, it's going to be a peristaltic pump, uh, which is the type that I'm going to hopefully end up building. Um, a pump based on a screw, like an Archimedes screw, which was invented by Archimedes hundreds of years ago. And um, then the third one is gonna be a piston pump. So what is peristalsis? Peristalsis is um, the same mechanism that actually gets used in our esophagus when we swallow something. So you put something in your mouth, you swallow it, and there's muscles all the way down our esophagus that um, clamp together and then they push down, they move downwards. So there's a pressure point and then that pressure point gets moved and then another one starts, goes down, another one starts and goes down. So that is peristalsis. Um, it's the same thing when you push um, toothpaste out of a tube, I liken it to that. And uh, this is definitely what peristaltic pumps, they uh, use that type of mechanism to be able to move liquid or the benefit of a peristaltic pump is the fact that it can move um, large grain particles. So it can move up to three or four mil particles of uh, sand or small rock in, in my case with natural building. Uh, it can move that without jamming the pump. Uh, so a fan-based pump that runs uh, with f a fan in it or a disc with, uh, with fans on it, really easily, and in water pumps, a very common thing is for a uh, rock or something to get caught in them and then that'll stop the pump or break the fins. So um, a fan-based pump is definitely not appropriate for our needs and uh, a peristaltic pump can deal and manage with a relatively large particle size. So it's used a lot in mining and as some pumps that have both water and, um, and material within them. So yeah, so I've got a couple of videos here up on YouTube which we're gonna be looking at 
I do not own any of the rights to these. This is purely an educational video. Um, I'm making this video so that other people can hopefully also build peristaltic render pumps because um, they're quite expensive on the market. When I looked my first initial lookings into them and research, I did end up um, calling a company and um, a peristaltic pump of the size that I'm going to build would be anywhere between five to maybe 10,000, a really high quality one could go all the way up to 15,000 um, and probably above as well. So I really like building things. I like the challenge of trying to figure something out and I love the hands-on nature of, of building something. So um, I decided to build one. Sure, it's probably gonna take me many, many man hours, which, um, you know, whatever time is money but when you're enjoying it it doesn't really matter so the first one that I'm going to look at is um, by uh, uploaded by someone called Andrew Bleber I do not um, own any of the rights to this but it's um, titled Rotho Pump Overview and it's just a really good 3D animation so Here you can see the basis of these rollers that uh, roll on a larger pipe. So this pipe uh, in a expensive or um, properly manufactured and bought one, like a real one that you can buy from a store, these pipes have a very, very thick wall. And the reason they have a really thick wall is so that the pipe can be depressed and then it can spring back to its original shape. If it's a thin wall, it'll be depressed and over time it'll just end up going flat, ultimately. So these ones, um, this is what the pictured one does include one of these pipes that has a really, really thick wall, but you don't necessarily need one. You, you definitely don't need one to start off with or just to have a play around with or build a practice one. <clears throat> I'm going to go outside into the shed and um, show everybody the parts and the current um, price list of all those things as well. So we'll go into the specifics of the pump, of the pipe, but ultimately now all you need to know is um, uh, how the mechanism works. So you can see here, and the video is now telling us that it's valveless, it's sealless, and it's glandless. So that's a really, really good, uh, they're all really, really good features. And um, back here, you can see the casing of it um, coming into it. So this is the outer casing. This is the inlet valve, um, the inlet pipe, sorry, where the water or our slurry comes in. The rotor then turns around and um, this rotor, which is a free spinning wheel, that wheel depresses the pipe as it um, comes to the specific point in the um, circumference of its uh, turning circle it, it slowly depresses it which is also helpful that it slowly does it it's not a full load straight away so <clears throat> the roller or the um, mechanism or the engine moving it doesn't take full load immediately it slowly eases in the mode um, the load and then pushes it up and one stroke in this mechanism, one stroke is from the base of the, um, the base of the pipe all the way up to the top. And then again, it slowly, uh, it slowly moves away and slowly releases that load. So by the time the wheel has reached the top, um, at the exact same time, a new stroke down the bottom is being taken up. And when this um, when this roller um, begins and then starts to move and it's under compression, the pipe is under compression, it actually uh, causes a vacuum behind it and it sucks more liquid or render into it and then pushes it back up. So it's quite an ingenious mechanism which has, um, yeah, pretty simple in its uh, in its design. Um, which I think is really cool. Um, and one of the other great attributes to a peristaltic pump is none of the mechanism, so this moving part, 
none of this moving part ever comes into contact with the liquid or the slurry or the render that it's moving, which is great because constant um, access to moisture and liquid obviously rusts things. And also because we are going to be pumping render, which ha has a really high sand content, that sand is going to be really um, destructive to metals. And um, it's amazing how quickly sand can actually wear away metal. Uh, you think metal's really, really strong and, um, you know, it can destroy things like sledgehammers can destroy brick walls really quickly. But over time, a small amount of sand will really, um, really wear away at, um, at metal. So that's another really, really good attribute to them. So that's basically how they work. Um, goes like that. And yeah, that's what we're mainly going to be um, utilizing that mechanism. So a second type of render pump that is out there is um, the spray renderers. Uh, this is by um, someone called Stucco Sprayer. Um, and it is a hopper based um, air, compressed air spraying mecha mechanism. So completely different. It has no moving parts. Um, and the way that it moves render and the force that it uses is through compressed air. So you need an external air compressor that's compressing air, sending it to it in a um, hose through this handle down here. And in the handle, uh, the, once you open the valve, it pushes air up through here. And then um, you scoop material um, out of like a bin or a hopper, you scoop it out and then you press it and it sprays out, much like is being shown right now in the video. So that's quite cool. I've used one of these before. Um, they're quite common. You can see there, it just scoops it in and spray it on. Pretty straightforward. That's pretty cool. So that one's great. There's nothing wrong with them. That's just another approach. Um, I have used one of those once before and um, yeah, it was fine. It did clog a bit. The nozzle clogged quite a bit when spraying um, the render that we wanted. So yeah. Um, this next one, the mechanism is called, uh, it's based on an Archimedes screw and it's ultimately a screw that's within another pipe um, that screws and you can see here the material gets picked up and then moved up to, in this case, it's up to a higher level hopper. But if you lay this on its side um, you and put a hose on this end here, that um, material is then uh, compressed to a certain degree that it has the mechanical capacity to move that material through the hose. So that's how they get used in, um, in render pumps and one here this video here, Mayer Screw Pump by Mayer and Sons Industries. Um, this here, turn the sound off, you can see better. <clears throat> there is a slightly um, transparent hopper here where you place all the material. It begins at this large screw and then the screw actually gets tighter, um, which makes it more compressed. So it takes a larger, um, a larger area and then it slowly gets um, smaller so that it's under even more pressure. So you can see here the screw is rotating and it's pushing that material out through this nozzle and um, then off to your um, wall or often uh, I imagine concrete pumps would run like this as well. There we go, lots of balls going in there. That's a um, great way to show how it all works. So that's the second one. It's a screw based render pump, which I won't be working on, but I think it's interesting to know how they work. And then this last one is the only one that I've seen in action and seen work. This is a, um, a piston based um, pump. So the piston there fires, it's under compression, and then this pneumatic valve opens up opens up like that and pushes all the material out. So this is a secondary moving part here and a secondary mechanism, the valve itself. You could just have a one-way ball valve that uh, one would open and one would close for in and out. 
that would work as well in a render pump scenario. Um, but um, it's not, uh, it's just not a design that I'm typically um, or particularly drawn to. So I'm not going to build in that way. So yeah, I then <clears throat> years and years and years ago after my friend around the fire said this peristaltic pump idea, I just started looking online and this video specifically was the one that showed me, oh God, I can make this. This is really easy. So it's by um, someone called Cremex JRJ, Juan Raul uh, Jimenez, Jimenez, I don't speak Spanish or whatever that's in. Many apologies for the terrible pronunciation. Um, and the video is called Cremex JRJ, Homemade Stucco Pump, Plaster Pump, Mortar Mix Pump. It only goes for a minute 50. Um, but yeah, really, really important. I'll put all these links in the, um, in the description. This one here was really encouraging because it's definitely homemade. You can tell that. And, um, it looked just really simple as well. So here we have the inlet hose, uh, which sucks in these rollers roll around just like in the 3d animation that we saw before these rollers roll around. They compress at the bottom here push this all the way up to the top and then shoot it out there. So I sat here, um, one of my investigations into this video, I sat here and counted the rotations and I could only get a look at it for about 15 seconds, counted the rotations um, and that was 15 seconds. So then I times that by four to find out the um, RPM that I'll go into in the shed, um, the RPM of the... Um, of the rotor um, and yeah this is very obviously just a small um, 240 volt motor running from a small pulley to a larger pulley and then um, a secondary smaller pulley back to this um, mechanism here so it's a um, it's got two step downs in it um, which um, yeah made a lot of sense to me it's all just very clear so <clears throat> This just seems to use a standard hose as well, not the big expensive hoses that I'll show you later. And here you can see the render spraying into the um, hopper. Here also um, you can see that it's spraying out quite uh, liberally and a quite um, big spray zone. Uh, and here we have a secondary air hose that's coming in as well. So that um, started me thinking as well about this introduction of air into the spray. So there's the secondary moving, the primary moving of the render from a hopper uh, into this gun and then introducing air into that um, spray right at the end um, before it comes out the nozzle, introducing that spray, which will then help spray it onto the wall and get a larger, better disbursement. Otherwise it'd come out um, kind of like uh, just like a, um, a solid stream really just go and I don't think and it wouldn't disperse very well so that got me thinking into that and um, a few other videos also helped me understand that too so yeah here we are um, spraying into the hopper so it's just a closed loop it sucks from the hopper and then sprays back into the hopper as well um, which is cool. Mm. Yeah, it's quite a thick render, um, which gave me yeah a lot of hope that this is going to be a system that's going to work. And um, just the cheapness of what I could see the parts being were quite was quite encouraging as well. So it's quite a long hose. Um, it's a ribbed hose, which uh, means that it's a bit more structural than a standard hose. Um, and yeah, here in this green hose, as the machine pumps, you can see the flex of the stroke. So when the stroke comes, it pushes that. So that's definitely something um, that I'm interested to see how that's going to work and how um, I'm going to need to uh, just work with that really. So yeah, nice, easy cabinet, just a square box, two pulleys, pretty pretty straightforward really. I was really, really, really happy that I found this one. So after finding this one and looking into it a lot more, I found this dude who is absolutely amazing. I've got to give a huge shout out 
to um, this guy who runs a channel called Anexo3 Brazil. Um, so, but although so many of the machines he builds are really intricate, really high definition videos, great talking, heaps of talking, it's all in, I think, Spanish. So um, all I could do was look at these videos and, and watch them but they were still really informative. So I would highly recommend, he builds peristaltic render pumps and also the screw type ones as well. So I highly recommend you go checking out his channel. Uh, again, I'll link him in the description here. So this one here is um, a really, really cool one. You can see here, um, there's actually three rotors. There's one, two, three. So instead of having two rotors per, um, per continual stroke. So one full stroke is two half strokes. It's um, divided into three. So one full stroke, one full rotation of the mechanism is three strokes. So that would actually lessen the, um, the lessen the um, severity um, of the push when it's pushing that render it would lessen that severity so the hose would um, flick around and have less force behind it so um, that was really interesting three rotors and these are also fixed rotors as well which i'll go into in my design um, these are fixed rotors but um, yeah it was just that next step of complexity away that I, I just wasn't terribly interested in um, in following. So yeah, this dude is totally rad. And again, it's just a closed loop um, here, sucking in the bottom and uh, spurting back out the top into a bucket and just feeding itself. Um, so yeah, again, another step down, secondary, um, secondary pulley uh, gear ratio. So it's going from small to big and then from small to big again. So to really pull that, um, pull the uh, speed of it down, the RPM of it down, but also really raise the horsepower and the actual torque behind it, which is gonna be a really, is a big question mark. If I'm running a really long pump, uh, if I'm running a really long hose, sorry, <clears throat> that needs to get all the way around a building or maybe up to a second story in a building, the ability to be able to push something that's ultimately going to be very heavy because the render has a lot of um, sand in it and water, which is, they're both very heavy. The ability to be able to push um, that render along and the length of hose and the height that I can get above the mechanism and the machine itself, the, how tall, how high up a ladder I can get or how high up a scaffolding I can get with it, that's going to be directly relate related to how much horsepower is in this machine. The mechanism is the same um, no matter what. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, gonna be really dependent on that horsepower. So bringing down the RPMs of um, the motor is really important. So this was really, really cool. And then here's the dude running this same machine actually spraying render on. You can see it's quite fast. It's just absolutely pumping it, quite literally. This is quite a thin stucco, but he does um, other videos where it's um, a bit thicker and if you play with the air to um, render ratio uh, with adjust the airflow that's coming in to that dispersal of air, compressed air, that'll um, really adjust how thick it comes out. So yeah, he just smashed that wall in like, 10 to 15 seconds um, to do that by hand would take a lot longer. So yes, it's just rough. You've got to come back with a trowel and trowel it off afterwards. Um, but once you start doing render, especially on super Adobe buildings or um, straw bale buildings, I'm really excited to be using this and um, giving my services, hiring myself out hopefully, or hiring out the machine itself so that people can render any type of natural building with it quickly and efficiently. So yeah, once you start doing it, you'll understand how slow it can be. So they're ultimately the uh, main videos that I drew inspiration from. I wanna really thank all of the people that uploaded them and took the time to upload them. Um, a really big shout outs to um, Anexo3 Brazil and 
um, the first one that I found, uh, Cremex JRJ. Um, huge um, fans of their channels. They've got heaps of different um, render machines. So that's, um, that's the basis of it. I, <clears throat> that's the basis of it. I would like to um, just jump into SketchUp and show and talk everyone through my um, very basic design. And then I'll go out to the shed and run you through more specifics of it all. So here is the design of mine. Um, I did this quite a while ago um, just to figure some stuff out. Um, I'll pop a PDF of this up as, as well, maybe leave it even as a SketchUp file if anyone would like to use it. Um, so it's pretty much um, very similar to the first video that we watched, the 3D animation. It's just a standard peristaltic one. Here I'm going to build the frame out of um, the backing frame, which needs to take a lot of pressure and ongoing constant pressure. I'm going to make that out of um, plywood, um, hardwood um, form ply and laminate um, probably four or five sheets all together to get that thickness. Here I have um, the rubber thick wall rubber tubing that I'll run you through out in the shed. It's um, one that I bought on I found on eBay actually, it's a replacement to a professional peristaltic um, slurry pump. And um, yeah, they're normally about 800 to a grand to buy as replacements and I got them for 200 bucks. I got two of them. So I got them for 400 bucks. So super pumped on that, um, pardon the pun. And um, yeah, so the main mechanism here is centered around um, this axis. Here we have a 50 mil pipe um, and then uh, 50 mil box steel, so square box steel, and then there's um, solid square bar that fits really snugly, perfectly inside that box steel, and then these are two lock off nuts, lock off um, nuts which can um, lock off nuts which can be uh, which actually grab the arms of these rollers. So the um, the main thing that I wanted to make this is I wanted these rollers, their height, or the way that the um, the circumference, I guess, of the circle that they, um, sorry, the diameter of the circle that they draw, I wanted that to be adjustable because um, I don't want to build something that's fixed and then as I'm using it, it um, I find out that it needs adjustments and I need to cut the pipe or make the arm shorter. So that was a big thing. So I made this um, <clears throat> mechanism here. This is a um, long nut. Uh, and this is also a long nut here as well. Uh, this is just an elbow. And uh, this is just an elbow that's welded onto the box. And then this nut sits perfectly in there. This is threaded, um, a big threaded bolt, which uh, is, permanently fixed onto the um, kind of bottom of this of this roller holder. Um, this is the solid bo solid bar that slides inside. Um, you can see there uh, it extends a bit of the way into it as well. And by getting a wrench and tightening both of these at the same time, I'm going to be able to push this roller up and down. Um, so that this gap here <clears throat> becomes smaller or larger so that I can slowly adjust it and just tune it and find out the best ratio. So um, a few of these dimensions have changed now, but this is the basic, uh, the basic idea of it. That's how I started it all. And um, yeah, I've been uh, collecting parts for probably two years or more. And I've only now in the last couple of weeks got 99% of the parts all ready to go. So yeah, this is the basic design and um, this will probably be it for part one and I'm gonna jump outside and do um, part number two for you. So yeah, I hope this video helps to excite people to maybe build their own. 
Um, I'd love people, natural builders all over the world to be um, building these so that larger projects could be taken on, things could be built faster um, and natural buildings ultimately becomes more accessible to the mainstream and um, also just to anyone really who needs to do it. Um, so yeah, huge prohibiting factor, especially uh, here in Australia, is the amount of time that these things take. So the quicker you can get something done, the better. So yeah, great. Chuck us a like, chuck us a subscribe, check out the rest of our videos, lots of natural building stuff on it. Thanks heaps for watching. Peace out.